I wanted to have a little chat about how coming into the felt sense of the body can help when it comes to managing your moods and your emotions. And to do this, I'm going to be talking about the difference between the survival brain and the thinking brain. So from an anatomical point of view, the survival brain is made up of the brainstem, the limbic system, and the cerebellum. And it's an older part of the brain, a less evolved part, if you like. And it's involved with what we call bottom-up processing. So sensations and information that's coming from the body up into the brain, that's called bottom-up processing. On the other hand, with the thinking brain, this is made from the more recently evolved part of the brain, which is the cortex. And it's involved with what we call top-down processing. So the thoughts and how the beliefs that we have have an impact on our system. Now, under stress, these two systems, or the survival brain and the thinking brain, have different responses that really influence us and can lead to dysregulation of our nervous system. So what happens with the survival brain under stress it doesn't have a language, so it can't communicate with us through thoughts or narrative. So what it does is it releases neurotransmitters and hormones that have an effect that creates sensations and emotions as the felt sense in the body. And you know what that feels like because it can be the strong fear, it can be the overwhelm, the anger, and that's all likely coming from there. Now, under stress, on the other hand, the thinking brain will try and get us thinking. And it particularly does this with thoughts about the future. So when we feel bad, to try and push those sensations away, the thinking brain might start planning and thinking, get more done, I need to work faster. And it can have us ruminating, so we're thinking over and over again. Um, and it, it doesn't often serve us so well because we can get really busy doing things to try and move away from this discomfort. But it's the thinking mind's way of trying to help us not feel those vulnerable feelings and to give us in some way a sense of control. So what happens is as the thinking brain pushes those sensations away and makes us get busier in our head so we disassociate from our body, even though we don't feel it, the survival brain increases this response to make us take notice. So you could think about these two being in competition to be the loudest. And the more we ignore those sensations and emotions, the louder they get. So that causes dysregulation because we end up moving into fight or flight and have really strong anxiety, anger, reactivity, our heart races, our muscles tense up or we might end up going into more of a freeze response where we become spacey and withdrawn and flat and feel more on the depressed side. So what we want to learn to do to overcome this and to restore that balance between the survival brain and the thinking brain is to learn to tune into our sensations early when we're under stress. It's the survival brain that has the best information of how we should cope with the situation under stress. So when we learn to turn into these emotions and recognize and allow them to be there and even name them, that in itself will help with regulation. And as we bring in this self-awareness, we're engaging a higher part of the thinking brain called the prefrontal cortex. And the particular part is the medial prefrontal cortex which helps us have greater thinking. So rather than this looping and ruminating about, oh quick, I've got to hurry and, and, and get things done or I'm not going to be safe. Instead, what it does is it helps us see the big picture to pause and really to remember what actually matters. So we want to bring the prefrontal cortex back online under stress. And we do that through self-awareness. And when that happens, when we start bringing awareness to the body and to our thoughts, we can then make better choices for ourselves and we restore that balance between the survival brain and the thinking brain. So by tuning into the body, we get this felt sense, which is our intuition, and that always has so much wisdom to guide us about what to do when things are complicated or we're under pressure. 
and we can also access that part of the prefrontal cortex as well. So sitting with sensations and actually naming them, you might even place a hand on the part of you that might feel the most vulnerable and see what's there. And then you might send an inquiry into the most vulnerable part and ask, what is it that you most need right now? And in this way, you're bringing the balance between these two. You're accessing your intuition and the prefrontal cortex. And in time and with practice, this will help you to undo dysregulation and learn to expand the window of tolerance that you have when you're under stress. I'll be teaching more on this in my upcoming Vegas Nerve program, and it's starting on April 13th. We'll go into a lot on restoring regulation. We'll go in a lot onto how the vagus nerve can help with this too. And it's six weeks in total with um, six modules delivered and there'll be six Q&A calls. We have our own private Facebook group. There'll be lots of videos, audios, workbooks, printouts. So if it's something that interests you, then I'd love to have you join in and I'll pop the link somewhere below. Thanks so much for watching.